Thank you, Pete Yorn. Had a big day in Techland today. You know, I just love a summer rally. It just makes me feel good about the world. Jim Goldman is our Silicon Valley Bureau Chief. He is live in San Jose. Jim. Hey, Dennis, good evening to you. This has been a remarkable five months, but truly stunning when you look at some of the biggest names in tech. And with a strong report expected from Cisco Systems this Wednesday, at least according to some analysts today, there's every indication that these tailwinds might only be just beginning to blow. Consider that over the past five months, the S&P 500 is up about 20 percent. Over the same period, the Nasdaq is up a strong 32 percent. But looking at some individual tech stars, you really get a sense of just how much big tech is leading this rally. Apple shares, take a look there. At 83 and change back on March 9th, they've doubled since then. And look at Intel, up almost 60%. Google at 290 in early March, over 440 at the close tonight. Research in motion, 35 bucks on March 9th, more than doubling as of tonight. Cisco out with earnings on Wednesday, almost doubling. Oracle just shy of doubling. IBM up almost 50%. Microsoft, despite its most recent earnings mishap, still manages a better than 50% gain. And with massive cash war chests at many of these companies and an economic recovery that still hasn't gained any real traction yet. There's a thought now that some of these key players in their sectors will continue in rally mode. Dennis, back to you. All right, Jim, stick with us, okay? And for more on the Roaring Rally, we've got our panel back. Let's start with Scott Richter again, the bull with the fifth third asset management. Are you looking at tech at all right now? Yes, Dennis, we're looking at tech. We like the uh, high cash levels, a lot of new product cycles that are coming out, Microsoft, for example. And uh, we think it's a part of what the uh, emerging markets need, which is technology to, to uh, grow their economy. So we do like tech. Right. Tom Lydon, you're uh, the uh, editor at uh, ETF Trends, and you're a bull also. This tech uh, incredible rally that Jim Goldman just described, it's happened without actual revenue starting to really grow. But I think we're seeing a, a snapback in demand from corporate customers that could really send it up higher. What do you say? Well, a absolutely. Dennis, you know, IT budgets have been the last to cut during this recessionary times. And individuals love their gadgets. They love their iPhones. They're spending money. Those are the areas where all this money's flowing. And as Bob Pisani was saying earlier, you can't fight the trend. We've been above the 200-day average for three months now. And with $4 trillion on the sidelines, it's really tough pushing against this bull. Michael wait, Pinto, let me say, wait, wait, let me say, how much, Michael how much Pinto, money? what about that? You can't fight much, the trend, babe. How much money is on the sidelines, really? Isn't it really zero on the sidelines? All that money is hiding in, in commercial paper and in the bond markets. There's really nothing. You're re really nothing money on market. the sidelines. You're really money calling market for funds, the devastation, funds, the devastating uh, uh, action in the bond market. You're calling for interest rates to skyrocket, aren't you? Don't you see any of that money flowing back into stocks? Yes, but that means bonds prices will plummet and yields will rise. And as an economy, we continue to take on debt and leverage. We are more leveraged now than we were in 2008. So when the Federal Reserve decides to take the pedal off the metal, what will happen to this economy? You can't sit there if and you're tell me about, you're going to be bullish but, for very long. Not in 2010. If you're talking about, if you're debt talking about a trade, yes, we're all, we're all making money now. But let's plan for the future. Let's look ahead and throw away the rearview mirror. Let's tell so our investors what's going You're talking about next. debt and leverage right now as far as the consumer is concerned. And Apple, for one, is not seeing any issue with consumers holding back their spending. Well, they're, that's they're on their the consumer wages are down, side. But hour, let's talk about IT. But let's talk about down, IT spending for a second. Their hours are down, and we lost six and a half million Michael, jobs. Michael, let him finish, please. That's Go ahead, terrific. Jeff. That's absolutely true. But if you talk about Apple, wages might be down, but they're selling more Macs than they ever have before. And how much is that They're selling more in, iPhones than they ever have before. They're banking more profits than they ever have before. This company just posted James, it's how much? Is that not a holiday quarter in history? But wait a second, that's just focusing on the consumer. Let's talk about the enterprise here because that's where the real spending is hey, going to come towards the back. Hey, Dennis, 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 the enterprise doesn't spend Joel, if the consumer is not going to purchase. It's not debt that matters in this, and it's not the, the overrated consumer. What drives an economy is productivity, right. and that's why the tech sector is doing so well. Look, how are we getting around all this well, bad economic matter, stuff Jerry. out of Washington? We're getting around it yeah. with microchips. This is back to Walter Riston. The microchip beats. Congress, which makes us more agile, it, it does, but Jerry, right. we're not saving. Jerry, we are the global. best Jerome, tech. We're not saving as a nation. Guys, we yes, have we to build saving. a we current account surplus, rate. and the we have to build a seven percent savings, savings rate, the highest savings rate in no, my that, life. No, no, no. As we a country, saving. Jerry, look at the Z1. I don't have to tell you this. You know this. We are increasing debt at okay, a four point one percent annual rate. Michael, I got to tell you, no one, no one in my audience is going to be looking at the Z1, babe. So let me just go to Eric. Okay, let's make our numbers. Eric, get it on this please well 
There, there, there's, there are lots of uh, arguments uh, to be made on both sides, but r really the most common misperception of what's driven economic progress in this country, actually worldwide for the last 20 years, has been productivity enhancements. Right. And no sector uh, other than perhaps biotech is um, more emblematic of that than technology. See, this is a, one point, I, you know, uh, 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 Joel Miller, you know, as much as the bears yeah. worry, and they have very real reasons to worry. I know that there's too much, too many dollars flooding the world. I know that interest rates are going to go up, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, technology right. is a big change from the 1930s, from the 70s, from all the other previous periods. <sighs> Maybe it's different. Maybe we're better off than they know, Joel. Well, you know, you bring up a valid point. I think the biggest thing is with people spending money on technology, it means that dollars are being used for things to move themselves forward as opposed to the staples and the necessities. They're splurging a little bit more. That goes to our consumer confidence, and I think because of that, we're going to push ourselves a little bit higher. Corporations also are looking for ways to get more productivity out of the people that they have. They're using that by means of technology, and I think all of this is going to continue to push us forward. So I think right. it's a very positive thing that will make us bullish going forward. Right. Harry Dent, you know, uh, all of the doubters out there say, you guys don't understand this isn't just a recovery from any recession. We've right. been through a traumatic thing. It's different this time. Harry, what if it's not? Well, you know, that's always possible, but look, the, the greatest credit bubble in history we've just seen and an unprecedented real estate bubble around the world, you can't even find a comparison to this unless you go back to the 1820s and 30s. These bubbles always deleverage. It always <laughs> takes three to five years, and it takes a lot longer, longer if the government tries to help. In the 30s, we deleveraged debt. Free market capital See, again with the 30s, Harry, the 30s. The you know, it's a different world. We are not America in the 30s. We are Pax Americana, baby, and we are about to uh, kick butt. Much we are debt. We are way more in debt than See, in, the in the 30s. Way more. We didn't have, in, in the 30s, the market was weak. Dennis, we have to consider the possibility that maybe the government really isn't in charge anymore. Maybe Oracle and, and the iPod is Bingo. in charge. Maybe global markets are in charge, and they can get around Obama <laughs> and all of his harebrained schemes. Sure. All right, you know, we're going to end right there. Oh. Thanks very much, gentlemen. And we are going to hop from the markets to another sign of recovery next. Auto sales, no joke, GM, Chrysler, doing better, too, and Ford. See, it's all going to be okay, guys. And a little later, the stocks, the sectors, the ETFs, the mutual funds. You might be wise to look at CNBC reports. We're back in two minutes.